The uh, had a good weekend. I don't know how your weekend was, but ours was really good. Um, and uh, we gave the guys Sunday off, and then came back and practiced Monday. Um, I was originally going to give them two days off back to back, but I thought that a, a, a Sunday Monday off, day off would not help us Friday Saturday Sunday. So by taking Tuesday off, which is today, I felt like um, that that day off could help us more in the sense that if we had practiced today, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, six days in a row, I felt like uh, even though I knew I wanted to give them two days, uh, this was the better day. Um, we'll get back together again tomorrow and we'll work out here before we get on the plane and head to St. Louis. Uh, in St. Louis, we will be able to shoot in the morning uh, at the arena before uh, the games, and uh, and then we'll probably stick around for the Texas A&M Alabama game, and then begin to work in the afternoon to putting our game plan, finalize the plans for the game plan, show the players what they need to see. Uh, we'll have another practice off-site to go through the scout and then we'll play on, on Friday. Um, we've got a, uh, um, I, think our, I think our bracket's tough, uh, but it doesn't really matter because, you know, you gotta beat them all if you wanna win the championship, it doesn't, doesn't matter when you play them. I had said, uh, I'd been on record, I bet you probably a month or two ago, I felt like Texas A&M, Alabama, Kentucky, for sure, we're three of the most talented teams in our league. Certainly, three teams with great, great size, great depth. Um, you put Missouri into that equation also, uh, especially if Michael Porter plays. In addition to what they have, then bringing him in. Um, then you have Georgia and Vanderbilt also playing to get into the game against Missouri. So that's the group that we need to focus on. Um, what we've done is we're working on us first and foremost, more than anything else. Um, our greatest challenge is no matter what, I will, not have another, I will not have a contact practice the rest of the season. I haven't had one for about four weeks. Um, what does that mean? That means we go, we go hard, um, we go full speed, but we don't hit. And uh, the, the, the reason is so simple, I can't afford to get down to seven. Um, and so as it relates to how we were playing late in the year, um, I don't think it was fatigue um, uh, as far as maybe not playing our best basketball the last month as much it was simply just not being as sharp from not being able to practice properly. Just can't keep an edge defensively. Can't keep an edge as far as your offensive execution. Just, you, just can't, you just can't. Um, and I think that was probably what affected us the most. And yet I still don't second guess the decision because um, we haven't lost anybody in practice yet. Bruce, how do you overcome that? Not having an edge because you're not playing physical practice. Well, you just you, you do what you can. I mean, you just you you do full speed reviews. You do full speed play call review at full at full court. You uh, you put the scout team in there, but you you put them in there in such a way where where there's no live rebounding or no live blocking of shots, no live taking charges. You just, you just do it so that at least they get a little bit of feel for timing. Um, but I don't think we really have much choice. Bruce, you've gone to the well of pressing the buttons of disrespect and being overlooked and stuff. And obviously that's worked a lot this year. Can you, especially in a tournament setting, whether it be now or a week from now at the NCAA tournament, when it's back-to-back -back days or two and three, can you play with and coach with rage about and anger about not being selected for first team or not being coach or player of the year? Can you can that translate in these settings? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do yesterday by practicing is I still wanted them to celebrate yesterday. I wanted them to walk around loud. I wanted them to walk around proud. Um, I wanted to relish the championship for another day. But I told them on Wednesday, that's, that's over. 
That's over. We're going to put that on the shelf. That's done. Because I, I just want them to soak it in for a few days and feel good about it. Um, and now we will get back to the fact that we were, you know, picked where we were picked. Um, the fact that I believe, I believe Friday's game is on ESPN. And that'll be our first time on ESPN. We've been on ESPN2 and the U and the SEC Network, which has been great. The coverage has been great, but we've not been on the mother station. I've not been on CBS yet. So those are just facts. No complaints because we chose not to complain about it. We chose to try to do something about it. And the only thing you can do is to win and change the perception of your program. Um, and so, yes, we will go back to still being doubted. Um, I'm very pleased that Bryce Brown and, and, and Jared Harper were recognized uh, amongst the top 16 players in our league. I'm disappointed that for the first time in 62 years, or since, the, to the best my, Cody's research can, can you know, bring, 1956 was when they started putting on first and second team all SECs, that there's never been a regular season champion that didn't have one player on the first team until this year. That's just been consistent with, with our whole year. Um, and so, yeah, we're disappointed we didn't get a first-teamer. Very happy for Bryce and Jared. Um, you know, as far as Mustafa was concerned, um, you know, obviously I'm really disappointed, you know, for him. Um, he outscored 11 of the SEC honorees that were, and they're terrific players named. All, all of them are worthy and all of them are deserving. But he outscored 11 of those guys. Um, he out-rebounded nine of those guys, and he out-won 12 of them, you know? And so from a standpoint of uh, that, I, I, you know, disappointed that he couldn't make his way onto one of the, one of the teams as our leading scorer, and as a guy that has sacrificed a lot. See, Mustafa has sacrificed a lot so that Jared could have more, Bryce could have more, Deshaun could have more, Chuma could have more, and, uh, done so willingly so that we could have a chance to be a, a champion. And so, um, um, you know, from that standpoint, obviously uh, uh, we're disappointed. Um, happy for Anthony to, to make the all-defensive team uh, and have that, have that recognition. Um, disappointed that Chuma wasn't on the all-freshman team, but, you know, probably, um, you know, with him coming off the bench, I think if you would, if if he would have played the role he played down the stretch, um, then that might have been different. I would have loved for him to get the recognition because he certainly was worthy of it. But it, once again, it's consistent, you know, for Chuma. Um, you know, he's the best player in the state of Georgia uh, coming out of high school, and and um, and two great players, um, Colin Sexton, and. Um, um, the big guy from Duke, gosh, I love Wendell Carter, who I love. I love both those players, both great players. Those guys both go to McDonald's All-American game, and, and, and Chuma doesn't. And yet he's player of the year in the state of Georgia and won a state championship. Um, you know, the other thing, too, about winning, um, you know, Damian won a state championship in high school. Or Chuma, uh, Chuma won a state championship in high school. Mustafa won a state championship in high school. And just, I don't think any of us would trade any championship for any individual award. I, I just know we wouldn't. Chris, do you believe, do you believe that SEC coaches took whatever personal animosity there may be between you and them out on your place? <laughs> Not at all. First of all, I voted for Rick Barnes for Coach of the Year. Um, they were picked 13th. He did an unbelievable job. And I voted for Grant Williams for Player of the Year. Um, keep in mind, as, as, as coach, we don't vote for our own players. And so um, I, I got it right both times. I nailed it. <laughs> Bruce, a, a few years ago, Cliff Ellis went on record saying that he hoped that you would be the next guy to bring an SEC championship here and that when you did, that he would kiss your ring. Has he, has he reached out to you or anything <laughs> to congratulate you since Saturday? 
You know, yes, yeah, yes. As a matter of fact, he has. You know, I got so many. I got 300. I got over, I had to stop and hesitate. I got over 300 text messages. And so when you're dealing at 3 o'clock in the morning on Saturday trying to send messages back because I can't sleep, um, I had to hesitate for a second, but he truly did reach out. Uh, Chris Porter reached out too. Left me a wonderful voicemail message. I can't tell you how many former players and coaches and, you know, so many of our fans and donors. It's been, you know, absolutely wonderful, you know, the, the reception and, you know, just I'm just so proud for Auburn, you know, to add to add to the excellence. That's what that's what we did. We just added to the excellence on campus, and so really happy about that. Bruce, if you don't think the message by these coaches was to you through your players for these all SEC voting, what do you think the message was? They just don't think Mustafa was very good. No, there are other really good players in the league, and I said that this year this league was as good as it's ever been. Uh, I'm stating the fact. We, we, we haven't had, in 62 years, this is the first time it's happened. Um, and I think it speaks to the fact that the league is, is obviously that good. And Auburn, you know, we've got, we still have things to overcome. Um, at at the same so time, it seemed like if, if, if people were trying to, people might come up with three different MVPs if they're trying to figure out this team. Is that an element? Maybe it's unselfishness. Maybe that's, it's just balance that... If yeah. You like about this team. Yeah, I would say that you know if um, you know for to take Tennessee for example, I think Adam Schofield, Adam Schofield, excuse me, and Grant Williams, I think are their two best players, and Turner certainly got uh, and Turner won uh, the sixth man of the year, which was a great choice, along with the other the other options that were there. But um, I've always just tried to lean towards the better the better teams. You know, the best the best players don't always get it. But I think the best teams should get it. So I don't think anybody else in the top 16 had more than two, right? Tennessee had two. We had two. Arkansas probably had a couple, right? I'm not sure exactly how else that works. I would have liked to have seen Mustafa on there. I certainly think he deserved to be on there. Um, Bryce Brown was one of the 30 candidates for Naismith Player of the Year. That's 30 candidates. But he wasn't, wasn't good enough to make the first team all, you know, SEC, which is eight guys, did the fact that either Mustafa or Jared or Bryce share some of the voting, and that's why that was the case. I would think that's the case. To suggest otherwise, I don't think would be uh, would be uh, completely accurate. If you just said ago, you said at Auburn and stuff, some things to overcome. What do you mean by that? Just you know, it's just it's okay. So fine, you won one. Congratulations. So we got to go win another one. But that people think you're a flash in the pan or whatever. But for me, one of the points I've tried to make all year long was, wait a second now. We've got the best non-conference record in this league, not for one year, but for two. Oh, by the way, we beat UConn and Oklahoma and Texas Tech and TCU last year, you know. So this is not something that just is not a flash in the pan. Um, and my intention is for it to not to be one. But it takes time. Bruce, how much will you pay attention to, especially before Friday, other games out there that are going to play a role in your resume, whether it be Temple being on the fringe of Q1, Q2, or South Carolina and Georgia in particular could certainly help you if they were to win a yeah. game or two? I would say at this point, um, at this point, I don't think I'll pay too much attention to it. I have all year. Kind of, you know, rooting for Murray State to win the OVC or for Middle to win their league or, you know, um, some of the other teams that we played. But the math has been good. I mean, we, you know, it's been, it's been what we've needed to be where we're at. I mean, I, I believe our RPI is still in the top ten, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I think our, at least at this point, our, the, 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 the things that they use to see the tournament, whether it be Kempom or RPI or, things along those lines, still put us in a position where, you know, we could get a good seed. And those are the things that I, yeah, certainly those, 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 those other teams, if they do well, yeah, it could, it could help us a little bit. But I don't, I, I, I think in years when maybe you're on the bubble and you clearly need a little bit more help from others, we don't really need that much more help from others at this point. I think we are, we are who we are. To the one most directly then. 
do you have a preference on matchup between who you will play? Because on one hand, you could get a rival a third time, another crack at him, and you probably match up a little bit better. On yeah. the other hand, you get a team who you know is a Q1 team, but has a massive size advantage that you can't possibly right. change. Right. So therefore, because of that, I, I, will, I will respectfully decline an answer to that question. <laughs> How big a deal is it going to be to your players to win the SEC tournament if they can do it, you think, after winning the regular season? Well, it won't be as big a deal as winning the regular season because the regular season is a grind in 18 games. But it'll be a big deal um, because there will be more people watching than ever before. And that's one of the things that I'm going to be talking to my team about. Look, we've put ourselves in, we've worked so hard to give ourselves this opportunity. And yes, they still doubt us. And, and it's March. I'll never forget when I was working for ESPN, Jay Billis, um, as you would expect as a more experienced colleague, uh, he and I were talking about studio or sports center hits or, or games. I was asking him questions so I could learn. And one of the things he said to me was, just, just remember this, save your best for the last. I said, why is that? He said, because nobody's really watching college basketball till March. And that's when you need to have, be, have, your, have your A game, whether it be in studio, on Sports Center, or calling games. And so, in this sense, my message to the team is this if we're going to continue to change perceptions in, in that sense, at this time of the year, everybody's watching. Bruce, is this the kind of team that can turn the lack of recognition into motivation at this time of year? I think so, uh, because they've done it all year long. Um, the other thing that is going against us is uh, I've always believed that cream does rise to the top, especially at the end of the year. And so what I mean by that is one of the things that I think put us in a position to win this championship, and I've said this about Tennessee, is we didn't always play well every night, but we brought it every night. It was rare when we didn't give a great effort or got behind and, 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 and quit or whatever the cases were. And that's what let us survive to win the 13 games we won. I thought that was the same thing with Tennessee. That doesn't work as much in March because now everybody's playing like this is it. And so we're going to get everybody's A game. They've got ours all year long.